Hi everyone, I've been off for a few days. What did I miss? Surely by now Celtic have signed some players. I'm laughing, I'm trying to do some sort of a humorous intro to this video and I've just realised how absolutely gubbed my voice sounds. I probably look just as bad as well. Listen, it's been a rough few days for me. Sunday I was up at SWG3 watching the final of the Euros. Great to see Italy winning against England. The best team in the tournament for me deserved winners. A uh, special shout out to Darren from Falkirk who I bumped into. Big fan of the channel. I think he's from Falkirk. To be honest, I can't remember because I'd had a bit to drink at that stage. But a big thanks to him for saying hi and a uh, big thanks to him and everyone else for watching the channel. And then the following day it was my birthday. So yeah, it's been a rough few days. But yeah, you don't really care about me. You don't watch this channel to find out about my life. You watch this channel... Well, I don't actually know why you watch this channel. I think it's something to do with Celtic Football Club. So we'll stick to that on this video. The big news is that we are now one week away from Celtic's first competitive match of the season and we still only have one signing made under Ange Postecoglou. One first team signing, that is Osazi Urigidi, and there's even probably a debate whether he is a first team signing, as in being ready to go into the first team from day one. So what is happening? It's all well and good saying Celtic are working hard, and I dare say they are doing just that. I'm sure they are working hard in the background to bring in players, but it's not really good enough, is it, that we're going to be going in once again to this Champions League campaign with a team that is pretty much held together by sellotape. We are miles away from where we want the squad and the first team to be and I kind of felt and hoped it would left that behind when Peter Law left the club. Are we just banking on the group of players we have at the club at the moment being good enough to see off Mitchelland, the second best team in Denmark? It seems that way and it certainly seems like that is a hell of a risky game to play. Now this video is going to be a bit of a roundup. We're going to go through some of the stuff that's happened over the last few days. Uh, I'm going to tell you about it, give some thoughts on it, some of the stuff I've missed, some of the stuff I'm only learning about today because I quite like to zone out from Celtic sometimes as hard as that is to do. And the reason that we're doing that video at lunchtime today is that later on we will be speaking to another member of the Celtic first team squad. Again, we don't know who, Celtic haven't told us what player it will be, but we'll have some more of that content for you later. So it's a two-day Monday for you today, hopefully making up for no videos over the weekend. Now, a wee roundup of Celtic transfer news. The first thing to mention is that Matt Ryan... Hi Aussie fans, by the way. He won't be signing for us this summer because he's going off to the Basque country to play for Real Sociedad. That was confirmed, I think, on Sunday evening. So you can forget any hopes of Matt Ryan being Celtic's number one goalkeeper or any Celtic goalkeeper this season. It looks increasingly like it's going to be Vasilis Barkas given that number one jersey. I'm all for that. I think he's wanted and needed to be given assurances by a manager and had faith put in him. That didn't happen last season. Hopefully, when that happens this season under Postacoglu, if it does indeed happen, it will mean that we see a bar cast that we've not seen yet. It certainly seems like it's heading that way, but again, time will tell. But Matt Ryan won't be coming to Celtic. Do, do, do. Dahan is back in the... Uh, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. But Dudu Dahan is back in the headlines because one of his players, another one of his players, I think he has millions of players, uh, and they've pretty much all been linked with Celtic over the years. The latest one is 19-year-old Israeli winger Lil Abanda. Now, he plays for, and I need to look at my laptop for this, Maccabi Peta Tivka, Tikva, where he scored 13 goals last season. Now, I've never heard of that team, but they actually finished fifth in the Israeli Premier League, to give it its completely unofficial name. Um, but he seems like a pretty good player. 13 goals he scored last season as a winger in the top flight of Israeli football. They're talking about three and a half million to four million pounds to sign him. Again, so much of Celtic at the moment seems to be how stuff is perceived. And that may not be the most important thing, of course. The most important thing, if we did sign a badder, is... 
would he be good enough to make an impact at Celtic? But it seems so much of what we do at the moment is how things are perceived by the support and failing to bring in any real players at the moment and then suddenly being linked with a Dudu Dahan signing doesn't look great, I will admit. Now, previous players we've got from Dudu Duhan, sorry, I've been calling him Dudu Dahan, it's Dudu Duhan. We're talking the likes of Biram Kayal, Nir Bito, Nefi Ambrose, Ismail Asoro, Hatim El Hamed. I'd say most of them are pretty decent, but then I'll bring in Amido Baldi, Rami Gershon and Stefan Skepovic. It's fair to say that is a bit of a mixed bag. So we'll wait and see if this one comes to fruition. Uh, I'm not against it, to be honest, without knowing a great deal about the player. The fact that he scored that amount of goals from the wing is pretty good. Israeli and Scottish leagues are probably pretty similar in standard, I would say. Certainly kind of lower half teams. And when we're looking to replace the goals of someone like Mohamed El Yunusi, then I would certainly be for bringing in a player like Abada. But again, how would it be perceived by the Celtic support? One signing that we do look like we're going to make uh, pretty soon is a guy called Boson Lowell. Now, he's a young Irish player who was at Watford. He actually won their Academy Player of the Year award last season, but he rejected a new deal with the now English Premier League club. The deal is said to be costing us about £150,000 in compensation. I think that was about the same amount we paid for Asazi Urugidi. Now, signings like Lowell and Joey Dawson, who we signed earlier this summer from Scunthorpe, both to go into the B team, both to hopefully make an impression and then work their way into the first team in, I don't know, two, three or maybe even four years. That's fine. I'm all for looking to the future, but when you're kind of not signing players to make an immediate impact in the first team, then it's a bit of a slap in the face and it doesn't really make much sense. Um, Lowell is 18, by the way, so he's certainly not going to be coming into the first team environment unless he does a Jeremy Frimpong and just amazes everyone. But there's not much risk to these signings. Maybe the future is Celtic's focus. Oh wait, it is, because that is the actual tagline motto that they used to launch the new home kit. Now that's a look at the home kit there. It's actually a little bit better than I first thought when I saw the kind of leaked images. Now those leaked images always look pretty horrible, but I think it looks quite nice there. I'm not going to be buying it yet. I'm going to be waiting until I'm not in quite as much of a mood as Celtic and then I'll probably purchase it September, October time. But I don't know. I think it's quite nice. Sky Sports, the folk who show our football on television, have released the fixtures that they will be showing in the month of September and none of the four games feature Celtic. That means that our trip to Livingston is set to be played at 3pm on Saturday the 18th of September. Sky are showing the Dundee Derby at Tannadice the following day. Hopefully we'll have full crowds back for those games, Livingston, etc., and as many Celtic fans will get to see the game as possible. Our first two away games of the season at Tynecastle and Ibrox will, of course, be shown on Sky Sports. Now, back to transfer rumours, just to finish this video. This is the less concrete stuff. Fenerbahce are reportedly expecting offers from three teams for their winger, Bright Osai Samuel, with Celtic said to be one of the clubs. Now, this comes from a Turkish outlet so you can take that with a heap of salt although we were linked with Asai Samuel when he was playing with QPR a year ago. Fabrizio Romano probably the I don't know the godfather of transfer rumours if that works he had another Celtic story over the weekend and it was quite an exciting one that we are reportedly interested in signing 19 year old left back right back centre back Brandon Soppy from Wren. Now, the reason I say all three of those is that he has actually played in all three positions in the last six months for Wren. And he hasn't actually played a lot, so he's clearly a very versatile player. He's out of contract next summer after rejecting a new deal, but he could still cost around four and a half million, which seems quite a lot for a guy who's out of contract, but he is highly rated. Now, French football is in a bit of a tough place at the moment with a lot of their clubs having to sell their top talents for probably less money than they're worth. 
because of a recent collapse of their TV deal and also that thing called the COVID-19 pandemic. So maybe the French market is one that we could look to exploit. I've said it before, you get really good value for money in France. I think we've seen that over the years with some of the signings we've made. Hopefully, we're keeping an eye on the ball with regards to that. Celtic, I implore you, please sign someone. We're back later with a Celtic player.